Stick with me and we're going to learn how to make glow-in-the-dark aliens prepare to be probed. <laughs> Here we go. So this is a super easy beginner project. Uh, I think this is probably the simplest thing I've ever carved. And if you're just starting out and you just want to do something silly and fun, this might be good. He does glow in the dark, um, but he's also a candle. I have a candle holder here. Or you can also put a little succulent pot up top. So most of my stuff I try to also make a little, little section to put a candle in, just so it gives it some sort of function. Um, this is going to be a shout out again to Jordy Johnson. If you haven't checked out his channel, check it out. He's the guy that inspired me to get started carving and he is prolific. I think he puts a video out almost every day like crazy. So uh, this is, he does wood spirits and this is what inspired me to do. This is my first large piece by the way. I just finished dating it. But it is a totem. I like this guy with the cedar nose. Oh, so it's an eastern cedar so you can see kind of like the red inside. If you look at the... So whenever you cut deep it, this red pops out. Um, and you can see it throughout any of the deep cuts. It's pretty neat, but boy, did it destroy uh, my bit, man. It it broke. Let me show you this thing. Jordy, check this thing out. So my bit snapped in half doing this. For some reason it skids around uh, when it hits. I don't know what this surface is called, but when it transitions from the the bright wood to the cedar redwood that transitioned super hard and it just snapped my bit and I was using this with it though so maybe that was going too fast because this thing's uh, got a lot of power the Goaxi uh, it is uh, it's the only thing I have that can take these quarter inch bits so anyway I snapped my favorite bit fantastic Oh yeah, you guys want to learn how to do this. So let's get back to this, and I am doing this because I want to enter Jordy's monster competition. He's having a thing this month where you carve a monster, and I think little gray aliens are pretty scary monsters, and they glow in the dark. And maybe, you know, you can make a little sign that says, like, I, I heart probing, or born to probe, something like that. I don't know. You could do something fun with it. So when we're doing this alien, this is my test run to make sure it worked. The design's going to be pretty simple, but you're, what you really want to do, the alien's so simple because he doesn't have a nose or anything, and he pretty much just has these giant black eyes. And there's a little paint on him right now, so if you want it to glow, you've got to really put the glow-in-the-dark paint on thick. And so his eyes are kind of a little hazy because of that. But if you put it on thin, they'll be really black. So I'm going to show you how to do all this, and uh, let's get started. So what I'm going to be starting with is some white pine. I got this from a local lumber yard that was using it as scrap. So I always uh, try to get wood that is either dead and fallen, or somebody's going to throw away a scrap. I would never cut down like a live tree to get wood or something. That would be wrong. But I will try to salvage what I can. So this is just white pine. Uh, you can pick a softer wood, like especially if you're a beginner carver, you might want to try basswood. You can buy some of that. So what I'm going to do though, is if you notice, I'm going to have to turn this thing into a round piece. In the front at least. So I've got to shave off the corners and round this out. If you already have a round branch or something, you can skip, skip this step. And I will come back after that's done. I'm going to use a larger burr here. This is a Bullnose Extreme. I think that's what it's called. And this is a Goaxi 240 watt. It is strong, but unfortunately, um, I don't have. Uh, in order to get like a flex shaft, you have to spend a lot of money on like a, for a Fordham or something. And I don't want to spend a bunch of money because I'm a beginner. So this is the cheapest way I could find to do this, although it's a little hard to do and a little dangerous. Uh, so I'm going to wear protective gloves. You'll see me always wearing gloves in this. And this is the kind that like uh, chefs use to, when they're using sharp knives and cutting. I use ear protection and goggles. 
and try to get the ones that come under your face so that protects you from uh, dust kicking up and I, I wear a mask so let me go get in all that stuff and I'll be back okay so this is now shaved down the edges and I'll smooth it out as I go but what you want to do is uh, you want to like I had to sand and flatten the so this would sit up okay but you want to put if you want to do a candlestick you're using a one and a half inch paddle bit and I use a drill and this is really hard because you got to put a lot of muscle because you're going into multiple different direction grains and I'll let you see what it takes but I do this now so I don't run out of room later Wow, that is really, uh, takes a lot of hand strength to hold this. So we'll check this, see if it fits. Yeah, we're good. Now, I would have probably liked to put this a little more towards the backside so I could cut in a little more, but I'll just have to start my alien under this lip so it doesn't, it doesn't break through. I should have planned that a little better. Okay. Let's go to the next step. All right, so what I want to do, um, just get a pencil or marker. Remember, pretty much anything you draw on here is going to get sanded away, so don't worry about it. I don't know where my nose pencil sharpener is, so I'm using my ear. So it's a little self-contained ear. That's a pretty cool one, right? Anyway, so I've got a nice sharp pencil. Sometimes you could sand this down if you wanted. But what you're really going to do is you're going to try to draw a light bulb. Now you can freehand this, like I freehand everything, but if you're really, really, really worried about freehanding it, I guess you could print out a stencil or something from the internet. But what you're trying to do is just kind of make a light bulb. So we're going to try to keep it as even as you can, and you're sketching. So if something looks oblong or weird, just re-sketch. I mean, just throw more lines on there. So we do this, and then it's like a light bulb. We turn, come down. We got ourselves a little chin. And there's your light bulb. Now, the, the point of this piece is to have big black eyes. So that's everything. You want to make these things almond-shaped. So they're wide on the outside. And point them in. Wide on the outside. And oh, that one's a little more oblong. Like, and then point them in. Now, are they even? Not really. But they're close enough. When I carve it, I'll even them out the best I can. But you know, when you're doing handmade stuff, nothing's ever even, it's never going to be even. Um, the other thing is you want to give them like uh, a mouth and usually you just want to do a straight mouth. If you make him unhappy, he looks angry. You know, if you make him smiling, he looks silly kind of. So I'm just going to do a straight mouth and that's it. So that is our alien. And like I said, he is born to pro, baby. So I've been uh, trying to get ideas on what to do so I can practice since I'm, I've only been carving about a month now. And what I'm trying to do is, uh, you know, I asked some of my friends over at MeWe like what I should carve once in a while. I've got some cool ideas. I want to try a goat. Um, I kind of want to try an owl or something. Uh, I don't know, some spirits or something maybe a little darker than normal, like witchy or something. I don't know. We'll figure out how I'm just going to keep playing, but I thought the alien was fun, and uh, hopefully it, Jordy will like it for his little competition. All right, so we're going to do this now. So I'm going to be using a dovetail because I broke this puppy snap, my uh, flame burr. So I'm going to be using a dovetail. My own, there you go. Dovetail. Um, so the dovetail is quickly becoming my favorite burr. I really like it to draw stuff out. 
And I'm actually using, I just got an RTX Black & Decker. So I don't know if you can see that over there. Hanging up. And I have it on a Dremel shaft. This is a 1.8 Cutsaw Extreme Burr uh, dovetail. So we're going to start, and I'm just going to outline this thing. And that's all we're going to do. And you'll see it goes pretty quick. So let's get started. Okay, so we've got the first cut done. This one's going to let me get in here with this extreme taper burr, the 1 8 inch uh, cuts off. And uh, Jordy was really right about this RTX Black & Decker. It is quickly becoming my favorite, uh, my favorite rotary tool out of all the ones I have. And so I'm going to use this to undercut, which means I'm going to dig under this thing to make it look more 3D. Now I've already kind of realized I made this too narrow compared to my other one. My other one's fatter. But you know, aliens could have some variety, so I'll have to uh, be more careful on how much room I have to work with here. It's going to be a smaller alien, it looks like. All right, let's do it. Okay, you can see in just a few minutes, um, we've been able to undercut this pretty deep. Like, you can already see the 3D effect starting to happen. I'll probably come in and undercut it a little more, just to give it more of a 3D pop. Then all we got to do is put the eyes in, and the mouth, and sand everything, and we're almost done. So it's a very fast project. Okay, so now you can see that it's a much deeper cut, and it also gives it this cool kind of beveled effect that uh, we'll be able to do something with later, but it just makes the head stand out more. <clears throat> so, let's switch over. Alright, so I'm changing out my uh, burr to a roto tile burr. There's a roto zip tile burr. I might have to go smaller than this point. Uh, just because I made this kind of tiny, so we'll see what happens. Now, I don't know if you guys believe in aliens or not, but I sure do. There's definitely too many people that have seen them, and I've known a few people that have seen UFOs that I absolutely believe, um, mainly pilots. Then the other thing is uh, I live right near where one of the most famous cases in modern history happened, the uh, abduction of Barney at Betty Hill in New Hampshire. Uh, I think it happened in the uh, mid-60s. And it's literally just a few miles down the street. So I, there's probably aliens just still coming around. And New Hampshire has an alien festival called the Exeter Alien Festival that happens every uh, fall. It's pretty fun. I've been there. So, uh, yeah, New Hampshire, full of aliens. All right, here we go. I want to first draw out the eyes. And what you're going to do is try to give yourself as much room as you can. You're going to try to keep it as straight as you can and go around the outside of the line and then try to just make sure that they're, they're similar. As we go, I'll widen and thin them. Sorry, I'll widen them out so they kind of match. I'll try to draw it in just a little better to make it match the other one. Maybe a little here. This is the hardest part of this whole thing, is drawing these damn eyes. So, alright. Thank you. 
Okay, so you can kind of see, all I did was go around in circles, or ovals, until I got them 3D looking. Now what I'll do is I'll take that same bit and kind of round out the eyes a little bit. Be real careful, because if you knock a piece of eye off, you really can't replace it. You just got to dig deeper. So I'm going to do that now. I'm going to soften this all. I don't know how much detail you can see, but I got the eyes now oval shaped. I went around the edges and knocked off all the like rough edges and smoothed it with the roto zip. I was just kind of going down the sides and kind of give them more of a round head and a round mouth. And it lets you get in to the undercuts and smooth all that out so there'll be a lot less sanding later. So I'm going to continue to do this and smooth and smooth and round and round. All right, so this smoothed it a lot. And then what I'm gonna probably do here, the last thing I'm gonna do is, um, I'm gonna kinda just, just a little, scoop out a little around the mouth, and, um, and a little under the eyes, so he's got a little bit of a zygomatic arch. But go real soft on this. Okay, so hopefully now you can see he's got a little zygomatic arch, a little bit of an eyebrow, just makes him a little more menacing. And uh, let me get to the next step. So apparently my camera decided to shut off in the middle of my tutorial. So you missed a bunch and I didn't know it was shut off. But here's what I did in case you missed it. So I'm still using this Roto Zip. I went around and I smoothed everything and rounded it using the edge. I put like a little zygomatic arches in. I made a little mouth. And then to give it a look so it looks kind of like fake bark, because I don't have any bark on these wood, I went around and put fake bark in. And the way you do that, use the same zip, you put it down deep and you just drag it up and drag it up and drag it and you cut and you try to make sure that there is a random pattern of this. Do not make the same repeating pattern over and over. Just kind of randomly cut it and you'll see how much better it pops with some fake bark on it. So my next step is I'm going to now um, darken it and burn it. I'm going to burn these eyes really black and uh, it will smooth a lot of stuff so I don't have to sand much. The burning will basically be like a, a sanding tool. All right. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to burn this, and it's going to eat away some of this detail, unfortunately. You have to be real careful when you burn stuff because it'll eat away all your fine detail. But the plus side is it eats away the little fuzzy stuff and the stuff you don't feel like sanding. Like, it is really hard to get a good sander <coughs> a deep undercut, but I can burn it, and it'll make the face pop out. So I want this face to be white, I want the eyes to be black and the mouth to be black. So I'm going to be careful where I burn it. I'm going to put a lot of attention here and here and around the edge so the face pops. And then I'll burn all the bark to make it look like bark. Now, I use a cookie tray because they can take a lot of heat. I've got some water on the side ready to go. And I have my gloves off so they don't catch on fire. That would suck. Um, I'm just using one of these creme brulee torches so I can control it. Now the thing about burning is if you do it far away, you will hit a big area and you will burn all the stuff closest to you. So say you want to burn the eye sockets black. 
you have to practically put the torch almost in the eye to burn it and to burn it without darkening the rest of the body and I'll show you what I mean so here we go so there I got part of the eye got the other eye and I don't mind the socket being a little black because it makes it stand out okay so we do it the other one All right, now he's got nice black eyes. Look how scary he looks. Wah. All right, now, whoop, that got away from me there. So I'll sand that black part off a little bit, which I did not mean to do that. I'm going to burn the mouth. Mouth's tougher to get. Damn it, I can't get in there good. There we go. No, nope, not really. So the mouth is tougher to get. Um, I did not do a good job on that. So I will sand that off. Try again here and see. Let's start with the paddle sander, the, the wheel sanders. But you can see he got a little bit of a dark mouth now. Um, okay. And then I'm going to go underneath and give him some contrast so he pops. Although I don't know if this alien's a he or a she. I wonder what the she's look like. Uh, wonder if it's like the movie Aliens where the she's just lay all the eggs. All right. Uh, so. I've got to now clean up all this stuff I burnt without completely killing all the detail, which this was unfortunate. I did not mean to burn it that far. Just caught on fire. And I'll probably carve a little deeper mouth in. So let me get all my safety stuff back on. Oh, let me do the rest of the bark. So we'll do the bark. See, and now, look how cooler that looks. Check them out. So you can kind of see that the fake bark looks good. Now, this stuff is actually pretty splintery. So I will also flame that just to get rid of the splinters. I suppose I could sand it, but I kind of like the flame look. It's a lot faster than sanding. Do the bottom. And now with the top, remember you're going to put a candle in this. So you want to really torch this because believe it or not, it's kind of hard to light burnt wood. So you're protecting the person. In case the candle really burns down, it keeps it from catching fire by torching this. Just a little extra safety measure. So you want to torch this pretty good in here. And this will protect the person so their candle doesn't catch on fire. So now you can get a good idea. That's how black I make them. Alright, so I'm gonna put all my safety stuff and sand this so I don't get sarcoidosis in my lungs or whatever the hell else you can get from particles of sand. Uh, I mean uh, particles of wood. Oh, and I'll probably burn the top. I forgot to do that. Yep. Just gives it a little cooler pick flavor. Alright, that's it. Okay, so now I'm going to use one of uh, these little flap wheels. Jordy showed you how to bake on his channel. It's basically stacks of fabric, uh, sandpaper. This one's been used, so it's rounded. And I'm using my Dremel 8100 just because I don't feel like changing out the bits. If you have a couple of, like old rotary tools, sometimes it's nice just to keep the, the burrs in it so you don't have to jump back and forth. So I'm going to go with a half speed on this so I don't rip all the detail out. 
But it'll probably take a little bit to get all this damn black off the eyebrows. I, I screwed that up. Okay, now you can see he's nice and smooth and shiny. Um, and one thing about using these sanding wheels is you can actually get on the undercut by using the other side of the flap. And that really got rid of all those tool marks in there. Just smoothed it out so it's really nice. The only thing I don't like is the mouth. Um, it is not dark. And you can either paint it or I'm going to cheat and color it in with charcoal. So we'll see if this works. So there you go. Although he might need a little bigger of a mouth, honestly. I think when I sanded it, it got too aggressive. Uh oh. There you go. I'll be. Whew. I accidentally uh, broke the pen off in his mouth. The charcoal. So I gotta get that out. I'll smash it up pretty good. So he gets a nice dirty mouth. Get a dirty mouth. You a dirty mouth. This way. All right. So there you go. Hopefully you like it, and so the next step will be to uh, the next step will be to paint him glow in the dark. But I am going to sand his eye just a little more. Got to mention is if you're trying to do fine details, you can use these discs to actually cut in arches and then sand them. So it's a real subtle arch, and maybe you can see that on the camera. I don't know, but he's got a little bit of cheekbones and eyes. So there you go. Let's go to the next step. All right, so we're going to use glow in the dark rust oleum paint, which it's kind of getting hard to find, although I do think it is Home Depot. It might have a little different version. Now, here's the thing about glow-in-the-dark paint that I found. They pretty much don't work in regular daylight very well. You would have to put this thing out for hours in the sun, and then maybe it only blow for, you know, 20, 30 minutes when you put it in your house. What I do use is a UV black light, and uh, it charges it up in a minute or two, and it glows for a long time. So... That's the way this paint works. You should use it with a UV light or some sort of, maybe like a red-blue plant light, something that has a lot of power. So when I sell these things, uh, by the way, I've only sold one piece, but when I, sell my, my, when I sold my one piece, I bought a little flashlight with it that I sold. Uh, so I'm pretty excited, actually. I went to a little swap meet and sold one little candlestick. Uh, but... I wasn't really planning on selling anything, just someone was like, hey, you should bring your stuff. So I said, all right, I'll bring my stuff. And one of my goal is, is believe it or not, this stuff's pretty damn expensive. Getting all these burrs and rotary tools and getting started, I'd like to be able to make back what I spent on tools. So I think it's a realistic goal. I think if I sell a few big pieces, and one of these days I'd like to get a proper uh, powerful drill. Uh, sorry, a rotary tool, like a... a, a I think they're called Fordhams. Fordhams, yeah. So, if you see me appear with that, maybe I've sold a few pieces. 
All right, so there you go. Because people are always like, well, you're a doctor, you should have money. And it's like, have you ever started a business? So I just reopened a practice this year, and I'm just hemorrhaging money left and right. And for a good, you know, year or two, you don't make a profit. You just spend money. you got to have enough money, any business you have, to survive that first year or two. And I'm still in that phase. So this is hobby money. And if I can make any money selling these things, I probably will, just to help pay for the tools. But right now, I'm not good enough, so I'm just pretty much giving them away for free. I'm giving them to my friends and stuff. So I'm going to paint this. Be very careful when you paint it, because you won't be able to tell if you smudged and got it over without a UV light. So I was really slop hazardly slopping this stuff on. And then... I realized I splattered it everywhere later on and I had to go back and sand and scrape all the UV paint off and it was a complete pain in the ass so don't do that so I'm gonna put it on notice how thick it is it almost looks like glue if you want them to really glow you gotta put it in super thick and what happens is this wood will actually absorb this stuff and it will be mostly translucent if you make it really really thick it'll stand out is super thick but you have to put it on really thick for that to happen now I am going in all the eye sockets because in and I'm actually doing the eyes too because I think you want the eyes to glow if I didn't paint them and they were just pure black yeah that might be scary but I don't think it'll quite have the same impact as black glowing eyes so that's where I'm going with this So this is, I haven't given him a name, maybe. We go old school and call him Alf. Do you guys remember that show from the 80s, Alf? They brought it back, I think, for a little bit. For some reason I started seeing Alf do commercials in the 2000s, and I don't know what that was, but it came back for a minute. He'd chase around cats and try to eat cats, which he never caught a cat, but supposedly on Melmac they eat cats. And they even made a cartoon, which is ridiculous. That I love how anything in the 80s, there's a cartoon for it. It's like Pac-Man? Yeah, people watch Pac-Man. Even though there's no storyline in that video game at all, pretty much. <laughs> Just running around eating pellets, but, you know, we'll make up some storyline. Donkey Kong? Sure, we can make a move. cartoon out of that. Oh, you guys can comment on the most ridiculous cartoon thing they made out of a toy. Or a video game. They actually had, if I remember right, there was actually like a video game power hour or something that had Frogger and Pac-Man and they were all like in one show. And knowing me, I probably watched it. Because I know it exists, so I must have watched it. Um, okay, so that's about it with this. I will let this dry for, you can, until it gets tacky. You can let it dry, and then what happens is I will probably go back and put another second coat. You'll see how thick his eyes, goopy his eyes are. After a few minutes, I'll go back in with the brush, and um, once it kind of starts getting tacky, I'll hit everything again and wipe his eyes out a little bit. I'll just kind of move it out and try to put thicker on the, the parts that stand out. So the center, you want a lot of glow on the, uh, the high points, I should say. So that's it. Oh, you know one thing I forgot. Oh no, I did not sign my piece. So I'll have to go back and sign my piece. Uh, Jordy will get mad about that. So once this dries a little bit, I'll go sign my piece. And uh, hopefully here in a minute, I'll show you a picture. It'll probably be a day from now, but we'll teleport in time and I'll show you a picture of what he looks like glowing. Woo! I will probe you. I will probe you so good. Come to me, baby. Let me probe you. Anyway, I don't know why aliens like to probe, but they do. You ever want to get their attention? Be probate. See what I did there? Those are words, probate. All right, never mind. That might be too much of a lawyer joke. I'm going to get going. We'll be back in a bit. Here is the finished piece all ready to go. And here's what he looks like glowing. Although it was still a little light, so it's not completely as bright as he will be. And again, I charged him up with a UV light. 
Anyway, thanks for checking out my channel. I'm sure I'll probably be doing some more uh, tutorials. I hope you enjoyed this.